Cambodia, just one of the Southeast Asian countries currently challenged by the Delta variant after successfully containing the coronavirus for months. The pandemic, of course, has presented a unique test in a country where more than 70 percent of the population remain unbanked. Riding the digitization wave that we've seen in other parts of the world, in October, the National Bank of Cambodia launched a blockchain-based payment system, Bakong. And just this week, the bank has struck a partnership with Malaysia's Maybank to facilitate payments between the two nations. Saray Chia is Assistant Governor and Director General of the Central Bank at the National Bank of Cambodia. And she joins us now from the capital, Phnom Penh. Saray, fantastic to have you on the show. Fantastic to talk to you about this. Um, just talk to me about what you were hoping to achieve with this launch. Well, first of all, thank you, Julia, for having me. Um, with the uh, Bakon that we launched in uh, October 2020, um, there are three main uh, important goals with this application. One is interoperability, living in a country where we have a very fragmented uh, banking system where we've got the uh, payment service providers and the banks are not who are not talking with each other. And, you know, um, by just making an analogy, it's like using a different uh, mobile service provider and you can't call to each other. And so basically we want to aim to create this interoperability and make payment easy. Uh, second is also to uh, for financial inclusion. Uh, we have, as you mentioned, about 30% of our population not having a bank account. And in fact, to open a bank account, it's, it's a bit complicated for people in the rural area because of the KYC requirement uh, is, is, is more demanding. Um, and so opening a, a wallet account, because we implement a tier KYC, uh, it's much easier for them to, to open. And the third is also uh, to uh, encourage the use of local currency. And now this is an important point to uh, to emphasize because um, Bakong in itself would not alone would not be able to uh, encourage the local currency or take away the US dollar from the economy. Uh, it is one of the measures that has been implemented by the central bank uh, together with the government. Uh, the important three important uh, uh, prerequisite is a sound macro fundamental, which is one is a stable uh, exchange rate, a stable inflation rate, and third is uh, a, a, a positive economic outlook and create the confidence in the local currency. Uh, so definitely Bakong would make uh, the use of local currency easier uh, for the people. Oh, there's so much in there. Um, I'm furiously trying to think about where I go first. Um, so to your point, and we mentioned it, a huge proportion of the country, around three quarters, unbanked, but you do have high mobile penetration so people can just access this a mobile wallet can make payments via a phone app and we were just showing people actually using it which is why it's so easy I believe all you need to use this is government ID and a, a mobile phone number and that's how you get access far easier to your point than, than trying to get access to a bank account for example Yes, uh, exactly. And in fact, during the uh, COVID uh, social distancing measure, and thanks God we've been working on this project uh, way before, and then when this uh, pandemic hit, it's a uh, uh, silver lining of, of the whole situation, uh, is that we, we uh, the, the uh, digital adoption is, is much, the pace of it is much faster. Um, so we have simplified the KYC measure. So for now, if you just have a phone number, you can register a wallet and transact within a very small amount, I think about 500 US dollars. And if you want to add the, 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 the value of your transactions on a daily basis, then you have to take a photo of your ID. And, um, and then if you want to increase it further, you have to actually be present at uh, a bank branch. But at the moment, uh, because it's targeting retail, uh, just having a phone number on ID uh, and take a selfie of yourself uh, will be enough to allow you to make transaction uh, um, contactless. Yeah, this is fascinating. And around, I believe, 5.9 million people have already accessed it. One of the other things that I think is quite fascinating about this, because you mentioned, you know, this is about trying to encourage trust, confidence in the domestic currency, when again, the vast proportion of financial transactions are paid with the US dollar. So it's about just rebuilding or building up the strength of the currency of the, the nation too. But it's remittance flows. I, I, I read that around 1.2 million people sent $2.8 billion home from regional nations around it back in, in 2019. So if you can facilitate payments from 
com countries like Malaysia, for example, and I use that one specifically for people to send remittances back to Cambodia with more efficiently, with lower cost, then this is vital as well. And I believe you literally in the last 24 hours agreed a deal on that with, with Malaysia. What can you tell us? Well, I mean, the basic idea of allowing this cross-border uh, come from a very personal experience where um, my, my uh, youngest son was adopted um, from a woman who was raped and she was a migrant worker. Um, and um, she sent money home and the money was used, uh, misused uh, to a father who was alcoholic, uh, be the mother and a brother who was a drug addict. And so the idea with this cross-border, in my mind, I was thinking about other migrant workers, particularly women uh, who work in Malaysia, mostly as domestic worker, and how can we help them send money easily home? Uh, cheap uh, is, is important, convenient is also important, but also important is that uh, she will be able to send money directly to the school or directly to the hospital rather than sending all at once to one person and this person risk of mismanaging uh, the money. And so this is very empowering for women or for, for migrant workers in general. Um, so we're very, uh, very pleased with this launch with Malaysia and we hope to start seeing transaction flowing in. And already we were informed by our uh, embassy in Malaysia that they're, they're bombarded with questions on how it is done. You know, hearing your personal story, this is so important because financial inclusion means so many different things um, and empowers so many people in different ways, which I think is very important. Um, final point, how do you see this growing? I mean, I mentioned you've seen 5.9 million people access it already. Just give us a sense of the transactions that you're already seeing and how quickly you think you can scale this up. So um, in terms of uh, digital payment alone within this uh, uh, pandemic, uh, from the uh, end of 2019 to end of 2020, we've seen an increase of 350% in terms of volume. And in terms of value, we see an increase of 200%. Uh, uh, and it reached to about $68 billion uh, flowing through this electronic payment. Uh, this is uh, a big amount given, you know, the country GDP of 25 billion. Um, in terms of Bakong itself, the transactions start growing. Uh, at the moment, uh, we have about uh, 1.5 million transactions uh, in the, uh, the Bakong uh, ecosystem uh, with a value of about 500 billion uh, US dollars. So um, it, it is growing quite rapidly given that, you know, last uh, quarter, uh, we only had about uh, 100,000 of wallet users, and as of uh, quarter two, which is three months ago, uh, in, within three months, we see a double number, and now we reach about uh, 200,000 uh, users. So uh, we hope to uh, for it to increase further, and most importantly, we also hope that we could cooperate with other countries as well to promote this uh, cross-border transaction for our tourists and uh, migrant workers. It, this is pioneering innovation. Come back soon because there's a whole other conversation about diversification in the US dollar. And I know you and I have talked offline about this and I know you have fascinating thoughts. So we shall reconvene on this conversation. Thank you for joining us today. Sarichia, there from the National Bank of Cambodia. Thank you.